message this morning uh, dealing <laughs> with something we don't have an issue with. But uh, a lot of people do. It's just a normal uh, way of life, I guess you could say, for some, some folks. But that's not, that's not us. But uh, we want to think about the subject this morning, dealing with complaining. Now, like I said, I, I know we don't have people who complain all the time here in our congregation, though all of us have known people like this, haven't we? However, during this pandemic and everyone being confined, one could easily begin to complain. So I want us today to look at some in the Bible who were complainers and how God felt about these who were complaining. Now I want us to look at uh, several things, but if I've told this illustration before, forgive me, but uh, it, it really does say something and fits this uh, message, so I'm going to share it with you. The story was told of this cowboy out west pulling a horse trailer down a dirt road when his, with his dog riding in the back of his pickup. A deer ran out in front of him, and he oversteered, lost control, and had a terrible accident. Sometime later, a highway patrol officer came along the scene, and when he arrived, uh, he saw all that uh, had happened. Uh, his first, he first saw the horse, realized the horse trailer turned up on its side, and the horse with broken legs and everything else, and saw the seriousness of his injury, drew out his revolver, and put the animal out of his misery. The story is told he then discovered the dog, also in critical condition, couldn't bear to hear the whining of the dog in pain, uh, pinned under the vehicle, so he ended the dog's suffering as well. Finally, the story is told he located the cowboy who suffered multiple fractures off in the woods and said, Hey, are you okay? The trooper asked. The cowboy took one look at the smoking gun in the trooper's hand and quickly replied, never felt better, never felt better. So I guess we need to at times realize um, we don't need to be complaining. We might be put out of our, our misery. With the lockdown starting to let up a little, I'm sure many of us are feeling a sigh of relief. Probably many of you have done a lot of things around the house you've been intending to do for years. Now, I know I've been on the road more, <laughs> been to all of your homes more during this time than ever. Barb and I found this article on social media where this man got all dressed up and told his wife he's going to the corner to get uh, a cup of coffee. So he got all dressed up. The story was told. He walks into a corner in his kitchen and takes a sip of his coffee. I guess he had cabin fever. He had to plan to go somewhere and do something. However, there are all also some very serious things on social media, such as praying for those with the COVID-19 virus. One of our sisters in Christ in Delaware had family members with the virus. Another sister in Christ, the minister's wife, is in the hospital right now with this virus. What can we learn from all of this? One thing for sure, this isn't heaven. And we don't have our new bodies yet. We're still in our mortal bodies. And we're not exempt from sickness and pain. So we need to be reminded, don't we? Not to fall in love with the here and now. But keep our eyes on our eternal home in heaven. And hopefully this pandemic will be behind us soon. But when we do get together, we still must be ever so careful not to get other people sick. And last of all, let us do all, all things joyfully. I'm reminded of the song, Whistle While You Work. Do you know what that means? It means we're to do what we do with joy in our hearts. Now we come to our text in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. Here's what Paul writes. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God 
without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. The American Standard, or rather the Amplified, says it this way, Do all things without grumbling and fault-finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting. Let us pray. Father in our God, I am thankful that we, we don't have a habit of complaining. We don't have people that are complainers, but God, we can easily, easily fall into that. Uh, we've gone through a lot of changes here in America and all across the world. Father, help us that we'll be thankful for life. We'll deal with tough times and yet keep our sights on heaven. Help us to honor you with what we say and what we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, again, in our text, we find Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives us orders to do all things without murmuring or complaining. Work without complaining. Serve without complaining. Go without complaining. And even though others complain, it doesn't make it right. We can't say, well, everybody else is complaining. One thing we must all learn, and that is, it's not okay to complain and grumble and murmur and gripe and fuss. Few sins are as ugly to God as the sin of complaining which we will find in this message, it is a sin against God. You remember the old song, Follow Me? I traveled on a lonely road and no one seemed to care. The burden of my weary back had bowed me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me. And then I heard him say so tenderly, my feet were also weary upon the Calvary road. The cross became so heavy I fell beneath the load. Be faithful, weary pilgrim. The morning I can see, just lift your cross and follow close to me. You see, the fact is, as Christians who are pilgrims and strangers in a foreign land, we have no reason to complain. To be concerned, yes. To be alarmed, yes. But not to complain. Besides, no one likes to be around those who complain all the time. I wonder if you've ever noticed how complaining is so contagious and can rub off on all of us. If we hang around complainers very much before long, we'll think the sky is falling. Complaining hurts and destroys one's witness for Christ. While a pure heart allows people to see God in a good way. I want us to look first of all at some examples of complainers in the Bible. The first sub point A is children of Israel. Of all people to complain and to bellyache and, and to not be happy after all God had done for them and yet still they complain. Only 45 days, roughly, after leaving Israel, or leaving Egypt, Israel departed from Egypt complaining. They even did what Jesus said we're not to do, and that is to look back. Remember what Jesus said in Luke 9, 62? If a man puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he isn't fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, if you set your sights on heaven and you decide to follow Jesus, but then along the way you pause and you look back into the old ways. Jesus said you're not fit for the kingdom of God. 
They were thinking, the children of Israel were thinking about the good old days back in Egypt. Good old days? <laughs> it didn't sound like good old days. They'd been been persecuted and had been praying to God regularly that God would free them from the Egyptian bondage and the taskmasters. But they were thinking life was better back in Egypt. Exodus 15 verse 24 says, And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Complainers are always blaming someone. So now they blame Moses of leading them into the wilderness to kill them, even after God freed them from slavery and the bondage in Egypt. And now they're complaining. And God now not only gives them water and gives them manna for breakfast, but gives them quail to eat for supper. Plus, it was their complaining that kept them out of the promised land. Exodus 16 verse 2 says, Then the whole world, the whole congregation, rather, of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. You see, it affected all of them. The whole congregation, the whole group is now involved in complaining against Moses and Aaron. It may have begun with 10. Remember the 12 spies that went into Canaan? 10 were evil and two were good. And the 10 probably affected the whole children of Israel. And now all of Israel is complaining. A negative attitude is contagious. Likewise, a positive attitude is also contagious in a good way. Exodus chapter 17 verse 3 says, And the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 25 through 27 says, they also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us, and they brought back word to us saying, it is a, it is a good thing. Is it good for us uh, in, in this land our God is giving us? Nevertheless, you would not let us go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you complained. Notice what it said, verse 27. And you complained in your tents. They might have thought Moses didn't hear them. Nobody knew that they were complaining. But God knew. And God said, And you complained in your tents. And said, uh, Here unto the people. Because the Lord hates us. He has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Now, notice here that, uh, again, the people were complaining. If, if you've only trusted in God, Israel was so wrapped up in their present journey, they couldn't see what God had in store for them in the near future. The promised land, flowing with milk and honey. Complainers often distort the facts, don't they? And, and they interfere with what God has in store for them. They felt that if they were still in Egypt, they would be near the food and be able to eat all they wanted, which was probably not true to begin with, for they were slaves and they were being persecuted. They obviously had forgotten the lashes they had received from their taskmasters and how they had prayed for God to set them free. And now they complain, thinking, God is going to let them die of starvation after promising them the promised land. Complainers never get enough. Remember, God told them to gather only enough for that day, and not to take more than they needed or try to store up for other days. And if they did, they woke up in the morning with a stinky tent and worms eating their leftovers. And then B, we find it's the workers who feel cheated at times. Jesus told the parable of the man who hired 
servants to work in his field, and they each agreed upon an amount. However, at the end of the day, the ones who worked all day got the same pay as the ones who came in at the eleventh hour, the end of the day. And they all received what they had agreed upon. Look at it in Matthew chapter 20, verse 9 through 11. And when those came in, and when those came in who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius, which when they first came, they supported or supposed that they would receive more. And they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner. Even though they all received exactly what they had agreed upon, they began to compare themselves instead of being satisfied with the wages they were paid. Remember what Jesus said to the soldiers in Luke chapter 3 and verse 14? Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. Be content with your wages. Do you wonder if at times complainers may overestimate their own importance or their worth? Therefore, they get mad at God because they feel they deserve more and they feel they've been left out. Keep in mind, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Complaining can totally destroy a good attitude. A good attitude on the workforce, a good attitude around all other people, which will steal valuable time from their employer who's paying them to do a job. More examples of complaining in the section C is the scribes and Pharisees. Look at Luke chapter 5 and verse 30. And their scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jude 16 says, These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. They felt so superior to others, they even wondered why Jesus was, in their mind, wasting time on them. You see, we need to realize everybody is important. Luke 15 verse 2 says, And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now the second thing I want us to consider on the message of complaining is why do people complain so much? Complaining often indicates there is a much deeper problem. Possibly section A subpoint is they failed to trust in God. They, they complain because they failed to trust in God. Being nearsighted possibly, focusing on what may irritate you here and now, blows today's problems way out of proportion. It causes one to forget the larger picture, the greater things that God has in store for his people. Complaining comes from failing to believe what God says. And therefore, it comes from not trusting God and his word. Section B is they are not willing to do God's will. Complaining may very well indicate that one is not willing to submit to what God has for them wasn't easy for Joseph to go through what he went through in Egypt, in slavery himself, being falsely accused, thrown in jail, being sold by his own brothers. But Joseph went through all of that, and God used him in a great way to save Israel. Could it be that murmuring, grumbling, complaining is evidence that they are dissatisfied with the way God is doing things? Quite possibly. Who are we to put God under cross-examination and to question God? Who are we to speak out against God with complaining? We were somewhere not long ago and heard this donkey let out a long, loud noise. Then one dog barked and then a second dog barked. And before long, dogs were barking from everywhere. 
What is it when one dog barks, others seem to join in? That, that's kind of like complaining, isn't it? You, you just get one person who's disgruntled or complainer, and it won't be long before it spreads to other people, and they're thinking, well, you know, that's right. I, I notice things I, I don't like to. Complaining doesn't change anything, and it certainly doesn't make situations any better. Can you imagine what kind of testimony Paul and Silas would have had if they were constantly murmuring and complaining and griping and being locked up while doing God's will, preaching his word and standing firm on the truth? Do you think the jailer would have ever asked, what must I do to be saved? He probably would have asked, what must I do to stay away from these so-called Christians? Listen, our testimony is so important. God uses godly people to bring others to Christ. Satan uses ungodly complainers to keep others from Christ. Complainers are missionaries of misery. Complainers rob people of the joy they once had. And then see, quite often complainers are self-centered. With little or no consideration about others, their needs or their wants, quite often all they have in mind is what they want. You hear them talk about their rights, their needs, and how uncomfortable they are. And then thirdly, Complaining displeases God. This is the final point. I want us to understand how serious it is. Complaining displeases God. Look in Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. In Numbers 14, verse 26 through 29, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Notice God said, I, I've heard. I know. It bothers me. Say to them as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and, and older. We realize uh, they're, they're going to suffer the consequences. God says, because you have murmured against me, you will die. If you've ever thought that complaining is no big deal, think again. It's a sin against God. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10 through 12, it says, Nor complainers, or some of them shall also that complain, were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples and notice it says they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. That's dealing with complainers. That's sharing with us what the children of Israel did and how they complained and how God destroyed them. Points out that all of that is recorded for our listening and our learning that we don't make the same mistakes. Let's look for ways to become a part of the solution rather than a part of the problem. For sometimes it seems that those who complain the loudest are usually the ones who do the least. Sometimes people are complainers and don't even realize it, which has robbed them of their joy and their happiness. If you find that you are a complainer, just stop. And instead of spreading discontent, spread a little joy as you go through this life. Also, let's help others who may be called up in complaining.
to number one, realize what they're doing and encourage them to stop complaining, to stop for their own sakes. They can't be happy. They can't have joy as long as they're complaining, but also for your sake. You don't want to be around it. You don't want that to rub off on you and to stop complaining, especially for the cause of Christ. Not only do we want to please God in all that we do and say so we can go to heaven, but we also want to take other people with us as well. We want to tell them about Jesus. We want them to believe and trust in Jesus. We want them to change their ways and turn to obey God. We want them to confess Jesus, to be baptized into Christ, to live the Christian life that they can have heaven as their home. Complain? No. Recognize problems? Yes. Deal with problems? Yes. But no need to complain. Just get involved, roll up your sleeve, and go to work. If we can help you go to heaven, if we can help you on that journey, if we can help you find the way, just give us a call. We'd be happy to lead you in the way of God. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you for blessing us. Even though we're going through difficult times and a lot of strange things are happening in our country, God, I, I pray that you will bless us, help us to deal with issues, help us to handle them the best we can. But Father, may we not sit back and complain but help us to do what we can to correct the problem. Guide us and direct us and help us, Father, to honor you with what we say and what we do and what we think. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.